Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. There are two former fiery detectives who pride themselves on always following through when it comes to laying down the law and cracking challenging cases. Absolutely. Last year, TV One took notice and created ATO Homicide, a series spotlighting their partnership and passion for solving hundreds of homicide cases in Atlanta. Take a look. We get flagged down by this lady. She's screaming and waving her arms crazy. Do the police work in the Air Dryer case? What's your name? Natalie. She's like, I have information that may help you out. We're like, whoa. We're thinking Natalie's about to give us the golden ticket. So this is an explosive new lead we have. Wow, they mm. join us now to talk about the show's new season and to give us their take on the do's and don'ts of law enforcement. Please welcome back down to the circle, Detectives David Quinn and Vince Velasquez. Yay. Hello. Yay. Yes, yes, it's good. Now, now, what have you done to your arm? Oh, long story. <laughs> 22 year old story. Yes, Salita so remembers the story. Yeah. Yes. This uh, surgery from an injury from 1997, I believe. Yes, yeah. yes, mm. yes. Okay, so I'm glad you got it fixed. Father's yes. Day plans? Uh, my son is actually here with me. He's visiting oh, from yay. Philly. Oh, so, yay. Uh, we'll have some breakfast before he flies back that okay. Sunday. Okay. Awesome. Good, good, good. Now, this. Um, season, the second season of ATL Homicide, looks like it's going to be riveting. Mm -hmm. oh, incredible. When you guys look back at the footage, you look back at the show, do you ever think to yourselves like, hmm, do you have any aha moments like I could have did this different or oh. I could have did this? Like in what yeah. instance, uh, describe to us, give us an example of you of that happening to you. I mean, when we when we sit in the studio and we start to film, you know, mm -hmm. there's so many outtakes that, you know, thank God nobody's ever gonna see. <laughs> right. uh, we just had a premiere party and, and part of the episode airing was them airing some outtakes and we, I mean, mm -hmm. literally were crying. It was oh so nice. Uh, because the way we work is, you know, true to life. When, sometimes when he's thinking something, I'll say it. Like, I know mm -hmm. what he's about to say. Um, but when we look at the episode, sometimes I've seen things where, you know, I could have described something a little bit better or maybe shown a little more compassion when ah. I'm talking about a victim or a witness. Mm -hmm. In Homicide, you become a little desensitized. Over, you know, 18 years working together, working murders, you know, it's not like th we very much care, but sometimes we can say something that may sound a little insensitive. Right. And it's certainly mm -hmm. not the case. Right, right. Wow. Detective Quinn, now, talk to us about like season two and the tone of the cases that you all will be covering this this season. How different is it? Or are they more like the other, the last season? How different is this new season and how, uh, what can we expect? This season's explosive. Yeah. I'm talking about, you're gonna think you're at the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so get the popcorn and the beverages of your choice handy before 8.59. It's about, it's about to go down. So yeah. it's a turn up. It's lit up. It's really? It's lit up. It's really? The production okay. values is off the charts. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, speaking of uh, off the charts, <laughs> there is a video circulating on the, on the Instagram, on the internet, social media. I know uh -huh. you guys, you may, or, you may or may have not seen it, but it's out of Hawthorne, California. A young man was uh, stopped by police officers, um, but it appeared to be kind of excessive. There was a woman in the background pleading for his life, telling him to be calm. I want to get you guys' take on this. Let's take a look. Don't move. Please don't move. Can somebody just come get him? Can somebody put your guns down and get him, please? Don't, don't resist him, okay? We got a call of a, a robbery, and he loosely matches the description of just detaining him, okay, while we investigate him, all right? We're not saying he's a suspect, but we gotta figure out what's going on, all right? The reason why he gets held at gunpoint, okay, is just for our safety and everybody around's safety, all right? So, there's one guy here, and they pulled out multiple rifles. Um, and there were probably about five or six police cars. Do you think that this is excessive or is this protocol? Mm. I'm gonna tell you like this, it's excessive. Mm. Yeah. I was a cop for 33 years, most of it on the grind mm. in those neighborhoods they call marginalized. You can't do that in every other neighborhood. You can't pull pistols and guns like that on what your fear, you know, we can't justify the police officer's fear only. Right. The public is also gripping with yes. fear every day. Yes. So I don't buy it, I'm an old school cop, I'm not with it. You don't need all that artillery just to, you know, get a question answered. Right. I fit the description. I fit the description when I walk out the house. Yeah. Whether I got this suit on, if I got a hoodie on. You know, so what, what's most it. important about this thing is this woman, this, this, is, this is what society is this today. Is the, that's the, yes. When a woman who doesn't even know doesn't anyone even know. involved in this thing is pleading for the life of a total stranger because the expectation is that he's going to be shot. shot. Mm -hmm. No doubt. 
That's yeah. a sad testament on where we're at today. Right, right. And then to echo those sentiments, I mean, the 10-year-old in Utah, Whew. you know, wow. mistaken identity, and they go and, and, and throw him to the ground. Oh, my goodness. What, what responsibility do we have as a society socially, like this woman, to ward off this type of violence? Do we have to plead out for our lives? I mean, we're suffering PTSD every single yes. day right. from th what's going on, right. especially people of color and marginalized people. Absolutely. My son is here today. My son lives in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. When he lived here with me, he was stopped by the Atlanta Police Department, my <laughs> colleagues, wow. because he's skateboarding on a sidewalk, and the guy that treated him, I mean, so badly, somebody that I knew. Oh, oh wow. Right? Gosh. And then once he found out who my son was, then it changed. Well, why should it change? It shouldn't. Yeah. It's bad. Right? If you're treating anyone like that, that's just not the way you should operate. And for this 10-year-old to be put on the ground at gunpoint because he fit the description of an adult, right? How do you how do you even justify that? What's the protocol for children? I mean, it's it's a child. You treat it like you treat that person like they're a child. You give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm, if you're that scary, because that's just being scary. <laughs> no, that's right. If you're that scary, get another job. Sanitation workers are needed. You know, you might have to become a nurse. I mean, whatever you want to do, <laughs> you're not fit. You're not fit for this job called police work. Yeah. And I don't that's, understand that. That's what's real. You yeah. might and not be not fit for it. It's not enough cops saying it. Mm -hmm. I'm go we always just, we always speak truth to power. Yes. Say it. Yes. Because what's going on here across the nation and parts of the world, it's just not right. Let's call it what it is. Not right. right. Wow. Speaking of right and wrong, at least uh, there are some police officers out, that are officers out here that do do things the right way. Um, there is another video, thank the Lord, <laughs> circulating on social media of a police officer that saw um, some young children, uh, some children in the grocery store looking for food. Um, and so he took them, bought them a bunch of groceries and made sure they got home safe. Beautiful. So, what I want to know is, what is the importance of the police force in the community you like have, that? Because we need to see more of that. You know, we're not, we're, we are police officers, but we are public servants. It's not about, you know, when you clock out, you're done. Mm -hmm. Whether you have a uniform on or not, I mean, we are serving the public no matter what. We, when we're out there in the community and we see people that need help, it's not like we're just saying, okay, when I get to work tomorrow, I'm going to get back to helping people. Right. You have neighbors, you have family members, you have colleagues. You have, this, this officer here saw a family that needed help yeah. and stepped it up, paid with his own money. Mm. Now we've done that. Mm -hmm. We don't ask for recognition. Yeah. We don't need that, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. every connection we make in the community is gonna come back to us tenfold. Yes, no absolutely. Doubt. Well, we're so glad that season two is here. Yes, so we will get to see all of the amazing work that you have done. You yes. get well, sir. I will. Happy yes. Father's Day. Thank and we're you. so very Policing happy. until that's finished. Right, no, right, no, right. No, so no, again, no. thank you so much for coming back down to the circle. You can catch these two in the new season of ATL Homicide, which premieres on Monday, June 17th at 9 p.m. Eastern on TV One.